Jesus' suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested, and falsely sentenced to death, but Jesus never looked back. He kept going. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to Him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way. Sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with His blood He shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to His cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And His blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now, there's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. Jason Blood Church coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Going to do a video. I hope you find it to be an absolute blessing. Blessing where a group of Bible believing Christians we rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. Looking forward to our blessed hope. Pay attention to that salvation message at the beginning. Subscribe if you're unsubscribed. A lot of people are getting unsubscribed. Um, hit the notification bell and like the video so others can see it as well. We are going to cover the um, image of God and sons of God. And we're going to cover the first Adam and the last Adam. And we'll see who those are and how that relates to us as Christians as well. It should be very interesting after the rapture. How does it relate to us? We're going to look at all of that as we look at the timeline here. But the first set of businesses is to get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. He died on a cross about 2,000 years ago. And the nanosecond you believe with your full heart, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, and you should be able to tell somebody, whatever language you speak, how you're saved. And have confidence that the blood of Jesus Christ will wash away your past, present, and future sins by the blood. Amen. And Ephesians chapter 2, 8, 9, it's not a works. Okay, let's get into the study. We're going to start out with, we know Adam was born here in the Garden of Eden, and he born was born with the image of God. Let's look at that first in the Bible as we take a look in the Genesis chapter 1 and verses 26, 27. And the Bible reads, And God said, Let us, so that's plural, the three in one, make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. And it goes on to say, what else? Verse 27, So God created a man in his own image. And the image of God created he him, Male, female, created he, them. Adam and, Adam and Eve was created in the image of God. But they fell in the garden and they were, I believe they lost the image of God. And so how do I believe that? Genesis 5 shows when we get to Seth being born, he is no longer born of the image of God. Let's look at verse 3. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. Really clear that the image of Seth that he received when he was born was from Adam. What I'm here to tell you is whether a, a Old Testament saint who was saved or just someone who wasn't saved, they were born of the image of Adam. All these people in here were born with the image of Adam and not God, and, and none of them were sons of God, like we can be today, and we'll look at that in a minute. 
So there, but there are sons of God mentioned in the Old Testament. So who are they? Let's, let's look at that. Genesis chapter six, it's only a chapter over, verse two. The Bible reads that the sons of God, so there were sons of God in the Old Testament, saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they choose. Now, a lot of people like to say these are sons of Cain or other men. But if you look at verse four, when, when is a saved person and an unsaved person ever created a giant? We see in verse four, there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. And it says how that happened next. When the sons of God came into, in unto the daughters of men and bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. So there's never been a time when an unsaved person and a saved person made a giant. But if fallen angels came down, saw women, and they were called sons of God, they could make giants. And we're going to have some more proof in the book of Job that these aren't just regular unsaved men. Um, these were actually the, the angels that fell and went with Satan. Job chapter 38, and we'll start at verse 4, and we'll go to verse 7. And the Bible reads at verse 4 of Job 38, Where wast thou, and this is, Jesus, this is excuse me, God speaking, the Lord speaking to, to Job, Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who have laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who have stretched the line upon it? Verse 6, where upon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? So Job wasn't around, nor was Adam when it was first laid. No one could answer that question. Man wasn't there. But here we go with the clue. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So these sons of God, these angels, shouted for joy when the earth was created. Let's go to Job chapter 1, the first chapter of Job, and we'll get some more clues. We'll go verse 6, and the Bible reads, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. That's clear. When Man doesn't go with Satan to present himself to the Lord. That was sons of God, which were the angels. And Job 2.1, we'll see it again. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And it says, you know, Lord questions Satan there in verse 2, where have you going? And it says, from walking up and down and in the earth. So from going to and fro in the earth, Satan said. Psalms 82, why you know, the sin that they committed was Genesis 6, but Psalms, let's look at Psalm 82 as, as well. And there's a, a there's a clue here. Verse 1, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods, plural. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? And let's verse, go down to verse 6. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. So are men gods? No, we're not gods. But these sons of gods were likened and wanted to be worshipped as gods. Satan wants to be worshipped as gods too. Verse 7, what happens? But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So this is not talking about man. This is those angels that fell, that they're going to, they're going to die like men. Well, what happened at, at Noah's time was a flood. And it, my, you know, what I interpret is it drowned out these fallen angels had come down. And, but in our time, let's look at the sons of God in the New Testament. So after Jesus Christ came, he was called the last Adam. We can see that in 1 Corinthians 15. We'll go now and see the difference of the definition of sons of God in the New Testament compared to the Old. One of my favorite chapters in the Bible, and we'll go verse 45. <clears throat> and the Bible reads, And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickened spirit. Jesus Christ is the last Adam. And he goes on to, if you're not sure of that, you can see that in verse 47 pretty clear. The first man is of the earth, Adam. The second man is of the Lord from heaven. Well, who's from heaven? Jesus Christ. So it's pretty, pretty clear there if you don't believe verse 45 and verse 47. All the sons of God today are the Christians who become a new creature, a new birth, when they accept Jesus Christ and they become the image of God and the Son of God because of that. Actually, 2 Corinthians, Corinthians 4, 4, my fault. And the Bible reads, 
in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, pay attention to it, comma, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Who's it going to shine to? To those that were lost if they accept Jesus Christ. But more evidence at Colossians chapter 3, I think a little stronger here, verses 9 through 11. The Bible reads, Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, that's our sin nature, our old flesh. Verse 10, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Who created us? God did, right? Amen. And so we see that where there is neither Greek nor Jew now, but Christ is all and in all. Christ is all and in all that are saved. So sons of God is what we are. And I'm going to make the argument, we were made to replace the fallen angels that fell here in Genesis 6. And that's our purpose, because what happens at the great white throne judgment is we're involved in the judgment of the world and angels. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. So we're going back to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and we'll go verses 2 and 3. Do ye not know, so this is Paul speaking, that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, that's specific, talking to the church here at Corinth, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Okay. Verse 3, know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? So if we're going to judge angels here in verse 3 at the great white throne judgment, these fallen angels that were drowned in Psalms 82 that died like men. And where are they going to come from? Well, they're going to come from the sea. Revelation 20 shows that the sea gives up their dead. But let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Four to five. Verse 4, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, so he spared not the angels that sinned, they died, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into change of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. But verse 5 is even more interesting because it talks about Noah right after it. And spared not the old world, right, when Noah's flood came in, but saved Noah the eight persons a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So this is a very ungodly time with fallen angels mating with women. In Genesis 6, 2, they, in 4, they created giants and they drowned them out and we will judge them. And we are the sons of God in the New Testament. And the Old Testament sons of God are these fallen angels, not regular men who did not have the image of God. We have the image of God because we accept Jesus Christ, the last Adam. So we're in the image of God, not the image of Adam when you become saved in the church age. What a beautiful gift that we got that all these saints back here didn't even get a chance to get. Anyway, I hope this message was a blessing. Get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and leave your prayer request in these last times before the rapture of the church. And a lot to look forward to at the rapture. We get to go up and see our mansions. We get to go see the coronation of the king in the Bible. We get to have the wedding supper of the lamb after our judgment seat of Christ and get rewards. And we also get to reign with him, the millennial kingdom reign, and judge angels at the great white throne judgment. God bless and have a great day.